Well, it's back to doing a new radio. As you can see, this is the Thunderpole T1000, which clearly uses the same chassis as one or two others, including the TTI, sorry, including the Intec M120. So we'll open this box and we'll see whether there's anything inside here. This is an optimization of a new set and although this is a popular chassis I don't recall having had one of these before. The instruction book comes uh, with a circuit diagram and a layout so we've just blown those up and um, at least I can find my way around uh, what does what with that information so it's nice to have that information because there's a lot of manufacturers who don't so what does it say on the back let's have a look Surprise, surprise, made in China. What I like about this straight away is it has an LED display and it's a three digit one. When you install a CB radio in a car, unless you get the angle just right, LCD displays are so hard to see. Right. What we'll now do is connect it to the power supply, take the lids off, and we'll take it from there. So the first thing I'm greeted with, I had to unsolder the speaker, which is fair enough. Sometimes they're on connectors, as you will appreciate, which is convenient, and sometimes they're not. However, at least it's a connector that isn't going to play up in the future if you haven't got it in the first place. Why didn't power lead? At the end of the day, this is the bottom of the range radio, as you will appreciate. Um, printed circuit board is fiberglass which at least we seem to be going in the right direction with that most of the ones these days seem to have gone that way uh, as you'll appreciate the SRBP the synthetic resin bonded paper printed circuits which all CBs uh, had a really a consumer only type of board and not really designed for much longevity though it's a, it is surprising that the 30 year old CBs so many of them are still working properly um, just looking straight away I've got this uh, Midland 98 Plus in front of me and you know you can see that's a synthetic resin bonded paper printed circuit so it hasn't got the strength uh, or the ruggedness that a, that a board like this has got which you normally previously only found in commercial things like you know the business two way radios it's a double sided board uh, so you've got print on both sides I suppose with the advent of these VLSI devices and, and surface mount stuff you really do need it to be a fiberglass board because you don't want it to break up. Um, clearly we've got the transmitter down here. The VCO is clearly there. We haven't got um, adjustments uh, details for the VCO but um, there's a test point there which says test point 7. That could well be something to do with it. On the TTI sets, and I'm just zooming on the VCO here, on the TTI sets, when they're like this, I have discovered, and you may have discovered, that when they get to be about two or three years old, you start to get microphony. That's where you tap the radio, you're on transmit, you tap the radio, it goes clonkety clonkety clonk. And what it is, it, the ceramic capacitors which are in the VCO section, they can absorb moisture, and they become microphonic. Uh, and this happens with all kinds of equipment. There's nothing you can do about it, and with it being surface mount, you know you can't exactly change the capacitors. 
so really you, you're ending up writing the sets off only two or three years on and we've had a couple of TTIs like that and I've probably told you before we use a printed circuit board varnish when these sets come in new for optimization we spray them with the printed circuit board varnish and I'll, in fact I'll go and get that right now and we'll do that uh, in front of you so the idea is that by putting a lacquer on here hopefully you won't get the ingress of moisture and hopefully you won't get the micro in it. Now I don't know whether these um, Intec type sets, I'm saying Intec we know it says Thunderpole T1000 but that's what we're looking at we, we don't know whether these are tied with the same brush but as a precaution that's what we'll do. I'm using the RS lacquer here which is RS components for those of you who know a huge UK organisation uh, for the component uh, supply in the UK so just give us a spray in there and of course we won't do any work on this radio now till that's properly dry so I'll give it uh, half an hour in the meantime I can be doing some other things and we'll pause the video so I'm going to work myself uh, around the circuit diagram and see what's going to need adjusting I can see we've got a crystal filter there which is a nice touch um, this is of course is a multi-norm set and I think that's about it we'll uh, leave it to dry and I'll be back with you in half an hour ok I'm back with you so having connected this up to the power supply on the bench and we'll switch it on and it's flashing CE at me there channel 1 as these come out of the box they're set up for CE so that's their 40 channel on CPT band now we want to optimize this on the UK 2781 type set of frequencies 26 276025 to 279125 so we need this into being UK mode and to do this on this set we'll switch the radio off the instruction book says we press the channel up button and then switch it on again which we've done and now we should be able to yes there's UK and if I press the transmit button for one second it will lock that in and there we have it it now says you can't really see that display can you with all these lights on we've had the lights changed in here since the last video we've gone from a single fluorescent to four fluorescent so we've got a lot more lighting on the benches but it's not going to help you see these displays but that says U01 so hopefully if we turn this to channel 20 the signal generator is on Hopefully, we should hear it. Ah, got the squelch on. Well, I can't think what that racket is in the background, but we'll come to that. It does say on the box this has auto squelch. It doesn't have auto squelch. The AS position is preset squelch. There's nothing auto about it at all. There's a preset inside the radio. We will be setting that to a sensible level if it isn't already. But um, I don't like it when they come out with things like that. It isn't auto squelch. It's preset squelch. So with that, we'll start uh, working on the transmitter. OK, back to uh, the video. The uh, first thing we do is going to transmit. Uh, let's have a look. 2779123 toggling 4, so it's absolutely spot on, which you'd expect it to be with it being a new set. The adjustment for the 10.24 master oscillator is that one there. The um, trimmer capacitor, and that would bring it on frequency if that wasn't the case. So we're not going to look into the VCO because we don't have. Uh, the adjustment things. The only adjustment for the transmitter is this coil here. The rest of it appears to be um, preset. But I'll just uh, double check. 
And I said that because I spotted something which I didn't see on the layout or the circuit, and that's another can just down there. Um, anyway, the first transmit one is this one on channel 20 on the UK. I say the, the customer who's going to have this isn't interested in a CPT channel, so we're optimizing it for the UK channels. If you're going to do this for the 80 channels, of course, you'd do this on channel 1 of the UK channels or channel 40 of the CPT channels. And that makes no adjustments, so that's fine. We, oh, by the way, we're doing uh, 3. Seven what? Uh, we're not, you know. We're doing two point seven watts as it's come out of the box. I'm just the one which wasn't on the diagram. I'm just optimizing that as well. We're still at two point seven. There is a power control. And the power control is RV3, and RV3 is down here, so we'll just adjust that. And that is now doing 3.5 watts. So I'll just go back to these two. Yes, that's definitely optimised. I'll just go back to this one again. There we go. Right, that's definitely, that's 3.5 watts. As I've said many times before, these are real watts on this test instrument, not good buddy watts. So 3.5 real watts, probably about 6.5 good buddy watts. So... Yeah, I'd like it to have done four on the test set, but it's within specification. And we'll now do the deviation. A transmitter deviation is RV5. And that's down there. So I'll just zoom in on that for you. So we'll just set the, um, make sure we're set up for this. Wallo. I just unplugged the extension speaker, just getting a bit of feedback there. And first of all, we'll just get the little oscillator on the job. Let's see where it is. Uh, I'm keeping the plastic on the mic. No, second thoughts, I better take the plastic off. I'll right, we'll try again without the plastic on. Um, I'm getting 1.8 deviation. Now, I'll just turn it up on that because we need to be 2.2 .2 to 2.5 really. They often, they often come out of the boxes over cautious, shall we say. Um, so I'll just adjust that. Do the whistle test. <whistles> ah, I've set it over the top there. <whistles> Wallo. That's it. That's peaking absolute max from there at two and a half. And that's it. There's no power meter on this. There's no meters that will receive with it being quite low in the range. So that's it. So basically, we needed to just to make sure the transmitter was tuned correctly with the um, uh, can there. I did just check that one which is in, it doesn't appear to be shown on the circuit. Uh, the frequency adjust would of course would be there. I've just adjusted the FM deviation which is there. The radio's power is there, RV3. 
and AM mod will be RV2. We're not touching that because um, we won't be the, the customer won't be using this in AM mode, even though that does become legal in the UK on the 27th of this month, this being June 2014. So, right, we'll stop it at that and we'll see you on the receive side of the video.